Sean, I know that you like telling your um, your sort of your bad jokes. I don't use the term dad yeah, joke. Yeah. Um, why don't you go ahead and write one yourself right now? Let's hear. Right, just off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. It's a joke off the top of your head. Okay. Uh, uh, not reading. Put the fucking book down. Um, okay. <sighs> No. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, so now it's down. Now he's just closing right, his eyes and he's one. thinking. No, just yeah. memorizing. Okay. Uh, can February, March? No, but April, May. Oh, oh God. <laughs> and you just came up with that. I just came up with it. Unbelievable. Just came up with it. Came up with it. All right, welcome to Smartless. Smart. I'm often down here um, in your whisper booth. In my whisper booth, listening to music. When I get down here a few minutes early, and I'll listen to music as I'm se- kind of setting up. You're sitting sideways in your chair today. You know why? You're looking all sexy. Oh, because your because my your leg still hamstring. hurts. Yeah, it yeah. still hurts. Yeah, man, it's a real. Sean, don't you have uh, from your your list of twenty five doctors you see on a regular basis? I went to. Sean, I'm, I'm seeing Sean's one? guy. Yeah. So, Jason, do you um? How did Maple's basketball game go? She has found a real stride. She had yeah. a, a tough first game, and then the second game, she hit the kid's version of fuck it and just yeah. started taking what was hers <laughs> uh-huh. and driving the lane and raining threes. Raining down threes. I was going to say, was yeah. she raining threes? She uh-huh. was. And 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 all the kids, she had she's like, it was a fantastic game. She's got all this confidence and then went out the next game, did it again. Next game, did it again. Now she's like one of yeah, the stars. Yeah, she's a superstar. The- did you make it in time yesterday? Because I know that we were on a call. Were you a little I did. bit late? Okay, no, no, I was, I was fine. And, 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 and listener, if, if you haven't heard or been bored by it yet, uh, she is, uh, uh, she plays on the boys team and yeah. she's the first girl in the history of the school. That's 30 no way. years is that re- to I ever play on the boys basketball team. That's, That's awesome. Sick. It's really Is there, cool. is there a girl's basketball team or no? There is. Yeah. Wow. Um, That's awesome. she's a, uh, she's a pretty remarkable kid that made. I love and her. Yeah, she really is. And she's got an old soul. Yeah. She's super connect, smart. She's super funny. Here comes yeah, a butt. I mean, she's Hit me with a butt. more mature than Sean. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I will say, by the way, also, I want to say, Jay, I know you an apology because I said at the end of our call, right when we got off, I said, I said, hey, I like you in the crew, but I prefer you in a V-neck. And that's not I true. I oh, like, shit. you look great in a crew neck. I literally, when I, I was putting say, on this crew neck bad. this morning, I literally, when I was, I was looking through my sweaters and I swear to God, on my kid's life, I was looking at the V-necks. Because I remember what, <laughs> what you I said, said. I <laughs> knowing it was a joke, but I was like, "Yeah, but you know what? He might be right." I can't wear I can't wear a V neck only because since I was a kid, my brothers used to call me ET because my neck is so thin and long. He's an asshole. Yeah, fuck and that. so I always wear crew necks. You know what? I can't wear I can't wear turtlenecks because of my because of my fat chin. You know the turtleneck yeah, I can't will wear a squeeze I can't it up and and, and I will I mean. cascade my neck skin over the top. I, I of can't it. I can't pull off a turtleneck either. What about a mock? Could you ever get find yourself Richard in a Ehrlich? Let me tell you something. Richard Ehrlich can wear a oh, turtleneck. Dick Ehrlich can get himself old into tricky it. dick. <laughs> it's just unfair for other men. Uh, what? But I did. I don't want to gl- gloss over the mock turtleneck made popular by goaltenders in the NHL in the eighties. Do you? Would you ever find yourself? Sean, I bet you wore a mock turtleneck. I bet you All the time. I used to work at Limited for Men, Limited Express for Men, and I'm colorblind, so Uh women would come in and say, could you put an outfit together for my husband? I'm like, sure. And I'd put, like, mustard yellow with green. Like, I wouldn't know what I was putting together, but I would always put a mock turtleneck with it. I mean, I feel like I've heard this about you before that you're colorblind, but I've forgotten it. But now that I'm reminded, it does explain a great yeah, deal. It's really bad. Think about yeah. it. Just on its, just on the surface, it's not a viable thing. It's a mo- it's mocking the turtleneck. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. making fun of. <laughs> it's half. Get it. It's a half a turtle. But now in hockey, speaking of hockey, with the new neck guard there to prevent yeah. cuts, um, yeah. that it does look like the the mock is back. Yeah, it does. And I, I, by the way, I'm not opposed to those those uh, neck things. But yeah, but it, they should I, do them. On, I think if on, you look at the numbers of actual people who get cut, I don't have the numbers ahead in front of me. Yeah, like, it's rare, but it's it's, it's worth rare. the it's worth the fix. Uh, that's, Somebody uh, wake up the guest because we're coming to. I them. know. Fuck. So. Here we go, guys. Today's going to be uh, tough for you because our guest this morning is a truth teller. Uh, I know ooh. it's difficult for you two to deal with mm-hmm. the truth, given that you both act for a living in show business, a couple of professional liars, a couple of coastal elites, but a hard-hitting <laughs> investigative journalist like myself looks for treasures like this man. He was born in Birmingham, England, 
His no. father, a school headmaster, and his mother, a music teacher. He's got two Peabody Awards. What? He was named to Times Peabody. Magazine's 100 Most Influential. He created his own church. He started the what? first hospital to treat chlamydia and koala bears. And he has his own sewage plant in Connecticut. He also has 19 Emmy Awards. Guys, it's John Oliver. Wait a what? second. Oh, Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> John Oliver. <laughs> Wait a second. There's the reveal. I've, I've moved my paper over the camera. Like as someone jumping out of a birthday cake. That's very good. <laughs> here's that's the crazy good. part. You said he's from Birmingham, which is maybe potentially true. I, I don't know if that's true. It is. No, it, I mean, it is true, Will. I, I, well, I immediately he's a huge I was going to say, fan, oh, though. he's a fucking, no, he's a fucking, we got a Villa fan on our hands. No, uh, I thought he was And Liverpool. I never would have guessed no? it because I know that you're Liverpool fan because you yes. did you did start to spew out the starting 11 of Liverpool. as, And you know that I'm a fellow massive Liverpool supporter. Mm -hmm. And it was the best speech of all the speeches, because he's like Big Verge, fucking Trent Alexander Arnold. Yep. Uh, I forget who else you. How let's, far did you let's get? hold on to our listeners just for a few more minutes before we lose them to a soccer talk. Okay, yep. okay, <laughs> or football. Football. Soccer is an English term, by the way. I don't want to get into the, uh, the is it origin really? of the word. Yeah, originally it's an English. He knows that. I'm not. Mm -hmm. well, anyway, uh, John Oliver. John, John Oliver. Oliver. <laughs> What a pleasure to be here. <laughs> what a lot of turtleneck talk I had to endure there. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's our, it's our Regis and Kathy Lee morning patter, you know? <laughs> John, why don't you, ha why don't you have a podcast yet? I mean, you know, you got you got you got time. You're only working once a week, right? I think right? it's enough. I think a TV show is enough <laughs> nah, for me and definitely for everybody else. I'm primarily thinking of other people. Speaking <laughs> of, congrats on the Emmy. You just won yeah. the Emmy and well yes, deserved. Very exciting. Thanks very much. Again, Thanks. really cool. Again, I, again mean, I love it, I love the uh, the bass in your voice there, Chase. Again, but no, again. I mean, but I'm saying, but it is it is an incredible accomplishment, and you know what? I mean, it is all writing. Right? I mean, you don't yeah. stop talking for 30 minutes. Yeah. It's insane yeah. and yeah. incredible. And I don't think I've ever seen you make a mistake. This man has got yeah. to be the best teleprompter reader in the world or the best memory in the world. Which is, or Other people can do it better. No one can do it faster. That's the promise. I will speed read a prompter. All right. Now, where do we, where do we find you today, John? Where's home? I'm in, home is the office today. So yeah. I'm in the office. That's New York um, or Los Angeles? New York. New York. Um, yep. John, you know, uh, I, I watch your show all the time last week, tonight, and I'm a big fan. And when you first came, when I first heard of you and the show, I was like, who, like, I, hopefully you don't take offense to this, but I was like, wait, who is this uh, guy? And the second right. you started talking and the show, I was like, oh my God, I'm in. I love him. I love your point of view. I agree with everything you say. And it's funny and it's clever. And where did you come from, <laughs> Ricky Gervais? Like where, the does Ricky Gervais deserve the the uh, the, the the? Did he not uh, recommend you to John Stewart? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Oh, they were, the Daily Show was looking for a new correspondent. I I didn't know Ricky. I'd never met yeah. him, and he said, "Oh, you should look at this guy in England oh, who's wow. floundering so, on the stand-up circuit." And that no way is that true? A lot. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's cool. I, I did not know that at all. And and um and and you still love doing stand up, yes? Yeah. Oh yeah, I yeah. love it. It's absolutely the only way to relax. Really? It's relaxing. Yes. I know for you. I know that sounds insane. That sounds like a medical problem, but the only yeah, the only way I can truly calm down is doing stand up. I mean that ah. says so much about your confidence and your your <laughs> self image and uh, god, I want some of that. So you're totally comfortable getting up in front of uh, a bunch. Now you're not. You've got stuff that's worked out, or or do you mm -hmm. kind of like to kind of riff it a bit when you're up? No, there? I mean I'd li I'd, I like to I like to have stuff that's very worked out, and then I like to be distracted. So uh, right oh. now, the wh where how do you decide which which part of it you will dedicate to uh, stand up and which part you will put on your show? How do you do, sometimes you're like oh they're ah. so different. They, yeah. they, this show is so narrow in terms of the stories that we're attacking, the way we're doing it. There there isn't a way really for one to cross over into the other. So it's much easier to keep the two apart. Right. So the stand-up is more sort of stuff in life, in any area, your family life, yada, yada, yeah. and, and then the show stays... Much, much looser than, like you say, taking a deep breath and then exhaling after 30 minutes. Oh, so <laughs> so, uh, how, yeah. did, so how, did, uh, how did a young... A young man from Birmingham, mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden, find himself a stand-up comic. What was that? Yeah. I mean, you, walk us through that a little bit. Well, I, I, I went to university and started writing comedy there, and then started writing my uh, started writing shows with uh, another guy there. We 
we really loved doing you that. You didn't happen to go to Cambridge, did you? I did. Yes, I did. I wrote with a guy called Richard Iowardi there. And so we, we were in oh. a, uh, a sketch group and then we w did shows, uh, two man shows together. Really loved it. And then I after the leader. started as a compare. I like when people talk about starting as a compare. But anyway, I didn't, keep, keep going. Okay. I didn't start as a compare. <laughs> no, okay. but you're right. It would have been a better story. I started yeah. as a compare, just welcoming <laughs> people to the evening that was what, about what, to be laid out in front of them. Uh, like a. Like an MC sort of. Like an oh, MC. Okay. Just yeah, a yeah. very fancy way to say MC. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who will be your compare tonight? <laughs> yeah. I, I got it, got it. So you started writing with him. Yeah. Then left left uh, university and tried stand-up and really loved it. So that first experience was successful, yeah? Uh, first experience was successful. That's often the case. It seems that many people have a similar story. They have, do a first gig. It goes well. They really like it. Then you're chasing that high for the rest of your career. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, yeah. the second gig is terrible. It I've heard of it. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Didn't Amy Schumer just tell us that? Yeah. 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 That would be the same, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's the same thing. You get too confident. You think I can do this. People <laughs> like it when I do this. And yeah. then a second audience says, "This is a second opinion. You can't do this, and we don't." That is generally <laughs> what happens. Now, if somebody gets if somebody gets lippy in the audience, is that something that throws you off, or do you kind of lean oh, into no. that? I love it. You do. Love of course it. you yeah. love it. He's smart. Masochist. What's the worst one? What's no, because if one? you're smart, then you can fucking cry. Yeah, go ahead. But they're all good. But the thing is, like, if you, once you do enough, it hurts at first, I will say. Once, yeah. you've, once, it's, once you've bombed a hundred times, no audience retains the capacity to harm you anymore. There's nothing <laughs> left for them to take. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you're right. Just, you, the dignity has been removed surgically yeah, right. by a hundred failures, and you're left thinking, I'm, I'm now... <laughs> Yeah. I could do anything. Was your stand-up always um, politically um, focused or no? No. I think for a couple of years, it was just basically trying to make people laugh and not to leave the stage to the sound of your own footsteps. That was basically <laughs> it. Yeah. So it's yeah, just yeah, an yeah. exercise in survival. Then once sure. I kind of learned the fundamental tools of how to do stand-up, then I wanted to talk about the things that I cared about, which were kind of political issues. Yeah. So then it became trying to learn a second time. It was yeah. throwing away the stuff that worked and <laughs> running towards the things that didn't. But it's yeah. hard figuring. I mean, that process of going through this, finding the stuff that works, I mean, that's an arduous process because obviously there's a lot of stuff that bomb. You, you might write a joke. You might go like, hey, a lot of people say ballet is hard, and I say just don't do it. Oh, Jesus. You know I mean? <laughs> like somebody might write a joke like that. That doesn't sound like a joke, I know. <laughs> But, but that John, that was one of my first jokes I ever wrote when I was like 23 years old. It always, it always works. <laughs> Did you do that on stage? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> or is this mirror work? I know. I really said. Did you go in front of people expecting entertainment, passively promised entertainment? Here's and another lean one. Lean in with that. <laughs> oh, here's another one. We haven't even heard the first one. There's not. Even, there's not even a first joke. What? what do you mean another one? Oh, that was so, your opening joke. I, I will say. Joke. I've come a, I've come 180 degrees around to loving the fact that you went on and brought up ballet yeah. to get an audience on side. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now I like that a lot. Yeah, for sure. And another another bad one. And this is going to be real cringy. Mm. This is going to make you come out of your skin because there's no joke here. Mm. And that's how bad I was. I didn't know you actually had to write a joke. And so I would <laughs> So I would say, "You know what's really weird?" Oh boy. Great oh. opener. You ever wonder why Let's have Every it. Now it is. <laughs> you know what? You know what's really weird is when you're at a dog park and you hear people call the name of their dog for the first time out loud. So you know you'll just be there and someone will go, "Mustard, come here, mustard." <laughs> that was the joke. It's, I said there's oh, no joke. Oh boy, it was so bad. The beauty there is you've identified something that I really think isn't weird. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing them say the name of their dog for the first time. Right. In a dog park, isn't it weird? That's to be expected. Sean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> should have been prepped for that one, Sean. <laughs> I told you it was cringy. There's no joke. I... <laughs> oh, this sounds like an absolute banger of a stand-up set. Yeah, thank God we found podcasting. You know what people say about ballet? <laughs> it's, it's a, you're kind of like the Seinfeld of like observational comedy, but the things you observe are totally normal, expected things, <laughs> right. and they're not unusual. You ever notice when people turn the corner, they when they're in their car, they turn the wheel of their the steering wheel. The direction they want to go. I just. <laughs> I know. All it's right. Pretty bad. So, uh, all right. So you're doing so you're doing stand up in in England, and you're having a good time, and yeah. you're finding some success. And then uh, Ricky Gervais either hears about you, sees you, um, 
uh, mentions you to John. John says, come on out. And within a day or two, you're on television. I, yeah. have, I, have I overly truncated uh, the first half of your life? Within a single day. I've, I flew to New York. And uh, then um, uh, they, they put, I think, looking back, it was a standard tactic that they would get you on TV straight away to try, so you didn't overthink it too much. Really? But I was jet lagged. <laughs> so I had just landed the previous uh -huh. night. Then I'm on television. And then the crazy thing was the in the audience that night was J.K. Rowling, just uh -huh. watching, just sitting uh -oh. in the audience. Not a guest, just sitting yeah. there. What? So I did my bit, turned, looked straight at her, and it really felt like I must be having some kind of medical episode. Yeah. <laughs> I was really? so, so tired, so uh -huh. confused about what was going on. And there's J.K. Rowling saying, oh, you, congratulations. That was very good. How bizarre. Wow. Yeah, now, were you weird. comfortable in front of the camera? Was that the first time you were in front of the camera? I think I was so tired, I was actually fine. Wow. So then the appearance on The Daily Show goes well enough to have another one and another one yeah. and even, even eventually hosting while John was directing his movie and you did that for eight weeks. It went yeah. so well. They said, this guy deserves his own show, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You start talking to them, but then HBO comes around the back door and says, how about with us? And you can do whatever the hell you want. I love that not... you've been able to put his whole answer and explanation into a question so he can just agree with a <laughs> yes or a no. I'm trying to brag about my ability to do research on my guest. <laughs> yes. John, thanks for joining us. <laughs> this was great, guys. Yes, that is correct. Um, do I have that right? Yeah, Com Comedy Central were very much not offering my own show at the end right. of that. Yeah, they, what, what John and I wanted them to do was let me have the summer so that he could leave each summer. Right. Uh, oh. uh, but they were not keen on that idea. Uh, and my, my contract was up at the end of that year. So then HBO said, would you like to do a show on Sunday nights? And I was talking to John about it. He said, you would be crazy not to. Yeah, do. it's so good. You're so good. Really? Um, yeah. Now, are you one of those people that do you seek out... Uh, other like comedies or stand-ups or do you go to live shows? Are you like, you know what? I do it for a living. I don't want to go experience it. I, it used to be my favorite place to be. I've got kids now. So mm -hmm. I got, my, my wife, <laughs> understandably, it got to the point of having a conversation. Do you need to go and do this or is this something that you want to do? But I mean, like, do you seek it? Like, do you watch comedy specials? Do you, are you yeah. a comedy? Okay, got it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's one of my favorite things. Uh, to watch and to do. So, do you yeah. have a fave? Do you have a fave that's out there now? So I've just, I just saw uh, Jacqueline Novak's Get on Your Knees. That was fantastic. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll the check new it out. Netflix special. Uh, Maria Bamford is probably my favorite stand up. God, she's great. Really? Yeah, she's really yeah. funny. She is I, so brilliant. If I could only watch one more stand up in my life, I think it would probably be her. Oh, wow. wow. That, that's so cool. Yeah, that's she's so awesome. unique. Uh, have you ever seen the show that Mitch Hurwitz wrote for her? Really good. No. Oh, fuck. Yeah, really, really good. Uh, what's it called, Jay? Do you remember that when he wrote that show for Maria? I don't. Um, really good. It wasn't um, called It's Maria, is it? <laughs> like something like that? No, uh, no, no. no, no. Um, all right, now, but now, before you got to do the HBO show, Lady Dynamite. Do, yeah, that's yes. it. Lady Dynamite. Lady Very Dynamite. good. Oh, you have a Wi-Fi connection. Good for you. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, I should have mentioned. I gifted. I gave Sean for Christmas. I gave him Google. Oh. For Christmas, yeah. And and, and, th and by the way, I haven't said thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course, dude. Um, now you were weren't you were you out like a like a roving reporter for the Daily Show? You 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 yeah. interview people. Did it ever get um, contentious? Were you brave oh, yeah. with them? Uh, anything weird ever happen with uh, your interviews? Oh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was constantly tense. Constantly. Ever get ever get punched in the face? Shoved around? Insulted? I don't think I don't think I ever got physically attacked. We definitely got threatened a bunch, but it never actually came <laughs> to physical violence. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that the tension generally showed that things were going well. Mm. So right. I would luxuriate <laughs> in that tension. I could take a bath in those long, awful silences. Right, that meant that you were successful at what your objective was. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Rob yeah. Riggle was a, was a correspondent when I was there. Yeah. He, well, Rob funny. can handle himself. Yeah, which the crazy thing is, he couldn't stand those silences. So he can physically handle himself, and he yeah. couldn't bring himself to inject that kind of tension. <laughs> I can't physically handle myself, and uh -huh. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. But that's also because you had a six-foot microphone and a long lens on the camera, right? You were standing no. <laughs> very far away from your subject. <laughs> not, not always. Sometimes it's just the length of an arm. 
uh-huh. which shows if I've got a microphone at the end of my arm and they've got a fist at the end of theirs, there's definitely room to connect. Right. <laughs> but what 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 you were doing and what they 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 do on the Daily Show and what what you've continued on your show is this great blend between you know satire, but also you know very important political uh, issues that 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 you bring to um, to the public's attention. Is that something that was always uh, well, I guess you said when you were when you were doing your stand up in in England, it was yeah. um, part of what you wanted to start to infuse into your comedy, yeah. Yeah, the thing with those interviews though was that you always they're always tense for the mm-hmm. Daily Show because you always want to embody the counter argument. So you are going to be really rough with the people that you agree with, and you are going to pacify and encourage the the argument that you don't. Yeah, yeah. whoever's yeah. saying the dumb stuff, keep them exactly. Going. Then you just say, please tell me more. Say say right. more about that. Yeah, of right. course, of yeah. course. How did you how did you hone like I don't have that skill? Newsflash. How do you how did you hone that? Like, is that something that developed in college or after college? Or was there a person oh. that influenced you? Was like, you know what? I want to be more like that because I like how they approach this thing. Well, for those interviews, we uh, you could only hone that by watching the edit, going through the edit, watching your own failures. That yeah. was the way to sharpen that particular tool that you would. Watch yourself on screen think it would have been really helpful if I'd said something at this point that was funny. I mean, it literally had an editor turn around to me at one point and say, hey, paused and said, you know, it would have been great. Just any kind of funny remark from you at this point I could have used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Really? <laughs> I'll really? try and remember that. But that ability to be, to be uh, uncomfortable in those moments and yeah. ask uncomfortable things and know and be... And obviously being provocative, right? You're provoking people yeah. to try to get to elicit yeah, a response that's going to be hilarious because it's so misplaced. Their views are misplaced or whatever. It takes a lot of, I mean, actually, I was talking to another Cambridge grad who's at the dinner last night, uh, our friend Sasha Cohen. And I was oh, uh, yeah. asking him about the second Borat movie and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I was saying, like, fuck, the, the balls to yeah. do that shit. And, yeah, you, and he does it in the movie, and he, in his movies, and he does it really well. But you did it as a as a day-to-day because it was your job to go and do that kind of shit. I guess you, you tell me, you get better at it or you get less... Well, you definitely get better at it. Does he, what is he, what's his answer? Does he disassociate as well? Because my head is always half in the edit. I'm barely there. While, the you're, while you're present, while you're yeah. doing it, you mean? Yeah, I'm, all, I'm just thinking mm. of the edit nonstop. So wow, it means wow. that I'm not really emotionally engaging with what's happening in front of me. Wow. Well, he's just, he, right, he, and he's got his, I guess it was a, a version of that, which is he's got his eye on the prize, and he just wants to get the thing that he wants to get. Yep. He wants to get them to that point. And so everything else is kind of noise until you get them yeah. to reveal themselves, right? I felt that, yeah, I felt that way about, this is the craziest example of that was, I felt that way with the Dalai Lama. I flew to India <laughs> to interview him, and I was starting to feel tense, right? Because you go, you're like driving up a mountain, uh-huh. there's monks there, and I'm, oh, I've taken two flights to fuck with this guy. Right. <laughs> thinking, oh boy, oh my god, oh boy, I think I'm on a slightly different page than everyone else on this mountain. <laughs> and he talks for like ten minutes at the start, and I am literally, it's kind of nothing. I'm not listening to any of this. Right. this is, I can't do anything with this. It's only when I start kind of needling him that he opens up and think, okay, now we're doing it. Literally, you don't need to transcribe the first 10 minutes of that. <laughs> wow, wow. Right, because wow. you're just trying to get that thing. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure that fit that. I'm not sure he as an individual has ever been listened to less than I listened to him <laughs> in the first 10 minutes of that. No, but, <laughs> but so, but, but, through, but through those efforts um, and, and, and then and, and also on your show, you're, you're, you're exposing and enlightening people to certain issues, but even all the way up to and including affecting legislation, yes? I mean, well, there are... I don't know. There, well, but uh, you'll be very humble about this, but, but please don't. And, and, and tell us what it... Tell us what you, something that you might be really proud of that you got done through very clever satire and basically making the medicine go down easy. Well, I don't know about, yeah, I don't know about the legislation. Making the medicine go down easy, that is something that we can do, right? So even in that yeah. alarm interview, what I wanted to do was get him off balance mm-hmm. so that we could communicate what was actually going on uh, right. with him and with the uh, succession uh, uh, problem that he and uh, Tibetan Buddhism has. So the same was true with um, when I went to talk to Edward Snowden. Yeah. Incredibly smart guy, right? Not a great communicator to people that don't have the technical understanding that he does. So it felt like what we could do was facilitate the important <laughs> information that he had right. into a form that people could understand. Right. 
Yeah. Were you ever worried that 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 like uh, interviewing Eric Snowden that that you're uh, that you're subjecting yourself to potential hacking and a d- destruction yeah. of your life? Oh yeah. It was terrifying. That was really? legitimate. I would be. That was yeah. legitimately terrifying. We were being followed the entire time by the Russian yeah. Secret Service. They were angry that we were there. We knew that the American government were going to be angry that we'd gone. We hadn't told HBO that we were going. It, it felt like... Wow. But I will say, it's the same kind of feeling as w- when you're bombing or draw- drawn to a tense situation. I was so happy, that, so giggly. Just think, oh, boy, everyone seems really mad at yeah, us. Yeah, giggling just that until... <laughs> everyone in, in, is the Russian government, the it, U.S. government, and my yeah. employer. But by the yeah. way, like, it's it's all fun and games, and you're just getting a good bit and a good comedy bit until you're in fucking Moscow and you get a case of, of window cancer. And you, you know I will mean? say, <laughs> it's funny you say that, because it's completely oh, false sense of security that you get there, thinking, oh, we're doing bits, it's fine, no one... <laughs> <laughs> no right. one minds the jester, and uh, they're, they're, they're following us the whole time. There's like a guy drilling in my room, the uh, Is that the true? ceiling, two a.m. Yeah, I'd hear this like zzz, zzz, two in the morning. <laughs> I'm no talking way. to the ceiling, saying, "I'm sure you're trying to intimidate me. It's job well done. Let's both get some sleep. Wow. Now, I'm now, leaving here tomorrow. Your 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 wife." I'm sure can provide some uh, some security for you and some and some proper guidance. She's a war veteran, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I yeah, mean, like is, yeah. that's a that's a pretty interesting combination there. That you, yeah. yeah well, she, yeah, she can provide perspective. That's yeah. not all it was. A hard perspective. Well, oh, it was so dangerous over there. Was it? Was it? Was it? Dangerous? Uh, yeah. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> when you say she was a war veteran, what do you mean? She was a combat medic in Iraq. She was, she was right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. She was a uh, fucking awesome. I'd for love the US to hear Army. those stories. She yeah. near she nearby for the, in in the US Army. Yeah. In the US Army, that's right. Yeah, yeah she wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at any point was she like, hey dummy, let's just do your little stand-up sets down at the, <laughs> the, the comedy cellar, whatever it's called, right. and and stop mm-hmm. messing around. Leave that stuff to the adults like me. Yeah, I think a little bit. I think it's I think she sees a different side of me come out because I'm probably a natural coward and then I'll become utterly fearless whenever yeah. it's in the inside a comedy bit because you know you've got the US Army behind you if things get hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Exactly. <laughs> oh my god. It's kind of like it's kind of like the it's kind of like in hockey like a like a skills guy who feels tough because he's got an enforcer on his line. Yes. Right. You uh-huh. know what I mean? That's exactly it. Uh-huh. Talk a big game. But that's yeah. only because Vladimir behind me is going to take over as soon as your gloves come off. Yeah. But but is there like a thirst? For, there's obviously a thirst for this danger, danger side yeah. of the correspondence and not just Russia or the Dalai Lama or whatever. Where does that come from? Where does the, um, you know what, I like to live just on the edge. I want to almost get in trouble, but I get I get out of it. I don't know. I live an unexamined life, Sean. I don't know where that comes from. I'm sure... <laughs> I've never looked inwards. That's the most <laughs> honest thing anybody's ever said on this show, by the An way. Unexamined life. Can I guess you're a sm- you're a smart person that is able to see all the inequities and injustices around the world, and you you have a platform and you are able to say something about it, but you can you can skin it in a way that is also kind of entertaining. Or you saw that we're idiots and you want to come get some of that sweet American cash. It's got to hey, be yeah. one of the two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. little, look, two things can be true at the same time. Oh, right. Right. A little column now, A, little column B. A couple of my uh, two. Of my uh, favorite battles that I, uh, my, my, my Wikipedia page has told me about uh, that mm-hmm. you've had. Uh, will you explain to the audience? Uh, let's start with the Russell Crowe um, uh, back oh, and forth. Yeah. How did that? How did that? What is that? How did it come about? And how did it end? So what? That that was just a stupid bit that we were doing. I get the the <laughs> true joy is where bits get out of hand and they get added to once they've left our building. Uh-huh. So with that example, he was he was staging a divorce auction. So he was oh, selling a, a divorce yeah, auction. Yeah, he was he was selling off all the memorabilia and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Wait, wait. He was divorcing somebody and selling all of her stuff. <laughs> no, that would be less charming. Yeah. He was selling lots of his memorabilia. He was selling like t-shirts, t-shirts from like, oh. like like the gladiator thirty odd foot of like grunt uh, uh, concert t-shirts and stuff. Got it. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. And so we we bought his uh, his jock strap from the movie Cinderella Man. Sure. And we sure. sent it to the last remaining blockbuster in Alaska as a kind of way to try and keep it open. He found out about it, and I, I wasn't sure. I, it didn't feel to me at the time that Russell Crowe was well known for his enjoyment in Bonhomie. He seems like a rough-edged soul. Then I, then, I, then we get message that he is using the money that we've spent on his leather Cinderella Man jockstrap 
to start a koala chlamydia ward in my name at the <laughs> Sydney Zoo. And what? I can't tell Wait, you what? how much joy that put in my soul. <laughs> of course. It's well, such a all, good joke. First of all, is chlamydia a thing with koala bears? Huge. It's a huge thing. But truly. It's a massive. The, yes, it yeah, is a well, massive problem. Come on. Did you not know that? It's the perfect joke. No. They all have chlamydia. They all have I chlamydia. Know, I didn't Why? know that either. How? What are you talking about? Are they but do you really ill? Because it? they're fucking each other nonstop. What, they, they do? Yeah. They're like bunnies? They're diseased tiny bears. So then the bears have this STD. Yes. Yeah. And and, and Russell Crowe sets up a, a specific ward at the at the animal hospital and puts your, your name, name on it. Yes. God bless. It's uh, a perfect joke. I've got all the time in the world for shit like that, for him doing that. Yes, yeah. it's a perfect, perfect... He elevated yeah. our joke. He handled yeah. it perfectly. He yeah. also managed to highlight a very real, albeit very funny issue among the koala community. It's... <laughs> I, I was staggered by how good that joke was. And was that the end of it, or did, did you did you go did you go down there and? No, the the beauty was th this is how go good he was. Go host a benefit. That's the only way. <laughs> we we <laughs> shut down the show the next week. We're, we're kind of you can't this this show's finished. You can't, nothing better than this can ever happen. Uh, wow. Then we were going to start the the next show with a bit that he'd done. I, I kind of wrote to him. Hey, here's the idea. He said, Yeah, I'll do it. I'll be honest. I don't think. I'm not sure you're elevating the joke anymore. And the brutal thing was he was completely right. <laughs> huh? Russell Crowe, the yeah, comedy you're doctor. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah, fuck, you're right. And eventually, at the end of the year, he came back and he did something for us, like with a big movie parody, and we returned it to him. But at that moment, it was a really solid comedic note from Russell Crowe. God uh, bless him, man. That's yeah. fucking funny. What a funny dude. All right, yes, now take us funny. to the Connecticut sewer plant. Again, and it, right, the, uh, another perfect example, right? We're trying to do a story about, I think it was jury selection. Uh, yes. And very dry, very dry story. Uh, and so a, one of our writers, Owen, wrote a drive-by joke uh, just shitting on Danbury, Connecticut. <laughs> Literally put <laughs> no thought into it whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. bang, Danbury, Connecticut's getting it. <laughs> because they, they, they were tilting the jury selection away yeah. from perhaps a diverse community they weren't, yeah, that's uh, they right. weren't that was, paying that, attention yeah, to. Yeah, that was the large story. Just okay. a sideways joke, throwing an elbow on Danbury, they didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the town of Danbury does not respond to this well at all. They are up <laughs> in arms. And the mayor then goes uh, on camera and says, as a, our response, we have a brand new sewer plant here, and we are going to call it the John Oliver Memorial Sewer Plant. Amazing. And again, the fact it's the Memorial Sewer Plant. Yeah. Add Memorial there. John Oliver yeah. Sewer Plant, that's already your, your shit talking me with a shit processing right. plant. Except to call it Memorial. Yeah, like, why? Oh, you've done it. You've done it. Well, but by the way, they didn't do it on purpose. That's the worst part. They don't understand. I don't think they get the memorial part. I don't. I really don't. <laughs> really? I really don't. I think that they, they didn't get it until after, and you go, what a brilliant joke, and they go, yeah, yeah. thanks, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, you start of your own church, Our Lady yes. of Perpetual Exemption. Well, yeah, is this yes. true? <laughs> That's true, so that was in our first season. <laughs> That's genius. We, we were doing something about televangelists. Uh, and we got one televangelist on it. So we were writing back and forth to him for seven months, I think, kind of send, sending him money. He would send us uh, more things back, saying, please put your hand on this piece of paper and pray and send me another $3. Okay, $3, <laughs> what are you going to send us now? Please put this little bit of plastic in your hand oh, yeah, and it'll curl this. up and that'll tell you which direction you should pray. <laughs> it, it went on and on and on until we eventually called him and said, hey, we've been talking to you for seven months. We're uh, going to... Um, uh, do a, a, a show about it. You got any comments? And he, uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd forgotten this. Uh, he said, no, no comments. That sounds fine. And then left our researcher like a two and a half, it was about 2.30 a.m. left her a voicemail that was very much a comment. <laughs> very much a hard comment about oh, really? what hell really? was and when we were going there. Uh, but so then <laughs> to show uh, that there were, to show how uh, tax exempt churches are, we then started a church and got people to send us money and offerings. And wow. unfortunately, they did both of those things. A a and keep going. And so what happened? So ha like well, they sent tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> mm, <laughs> tens really? of thousands, yeah. And, um, and uh, it, then ver various offerings. And we're pretty sure two cups of semen. And that's when we shut the church down. <laughs> it's the second cup of semen. But that 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 that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing to me that you can just do that and, and, and it be... Legit. By, by the way, right? I knew, I knew, from, I could see Sean's face. 
and I could see the fucking wheels turning in there. I saw both hamsters get on the wheel, and 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 and, and he was like, "Wait, if I do oh, it, no, it no. can I be tax exempt? And yeah. then I can buy my own no, no. plane, I, and I can that... buy a mansion, and it's no. all the. Did you not a little bit? No, no. The reason because I'm fascinated by religion, and yeah. and I'm fascinated oh, okay. by and you hate money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am, and just like I, without naming other religions, I mean, there's thousands of religions in the world. All, all religion, every single thing in the world is invented, right? Even religion is invented. How dare and you? you just pr- what's that? How dare you? <laughs> and even even you just so with that little stunt or whatever, it's just proved that you can. I, I'm just that's fascinating to me that you did that and it worked. Yeah, with with some stories, it it feels like it helps sometimes to show if the, if a problem is that there is a very low bar of entry for something. Yeah. It, sometimes it feels the best way to prove that is to clear that bar. So that's right. why we have sometimes right. done things in practice as well as telling people what's possible in theory. Oh, right, 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 right. right. And th- that's where things can get a little legally dicey and very, very fun. Yeah, yeah. Now the, the so. I love it. The, the uh, you will uh, oftentimes cover multiple issues in the thirty minutes, uh, and sometimes you will dedicate the whole thirty minutes to, to one. How do you? Well, first of all, how did you come up? What, what what was the genesis of the of the format for for the show? Oh, yeah. When did yeah that changed a lot actually because uh, we didn't have an idea of what really we were going to do other than there were a couple of stories. Uh, that we'd done that summer that John was away that it felt like the Daily Show wouldn't normally have done. One was about aluminum pricing. Uh, and what was about the city of Detroit, I think. And it felt like, oh, we could do more things like that. So mm-hmm. we did two test shows, but we had a guest area built in because I thought that you just had to have guests right. on late night shows. So uh, the one note that HBO had had for us was you don't need to have guests if you don't want them. You can just add to the time of the story. That's great. And yeah, we couldn't have bit their hand off fast enough. <laughs> and we like, I didn't have to get right. up and say, oh, this person is here now. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, but I mean, a huge credit to you and your staff. Y- you don't need anything else other than the results of your research, the shaping of that opinion, and your delivery of it. It like, feels like it's... it's better to live or die that way. And I think yeah. we're very, very lucky because we don't have to take ad breaks. And I do think what we need is a, a trapped audience because it's not like you can hold people's attention, say, okay, we're going to let Twix tell you how delicious it is for three and a right. half minutes. Then you need to remember we're coming back into this story about facial recognition technology exactly where we left off. Also, the fact that there is no ad support on on, on HBO, you don't need to worry about offending any oh, brand. So it's that's free reign. That's a huge deal. That's a yeah. massive, massive uh-huh. deal. Yeah. You get to build your own momentum. One of the things I like, when you get on a subject, you get to, you, you get to drive the momentum and you don't have to take those breaks where you, like, as you said, yeah. where you lose it, you can keep doubling down and compounding the energy and the focus and as you get sharper and sharper by the end of the thing and you actually get more animated and, yeah. and more into it and that's part of the allure of what you're doing is that, uh, you know, of making that point of shedding all the shit and getting to it, if you were to have ad breaks, it would... It would take away that energy. Yeah, yeah we'd be, it'd be tough. I think that's one of the reasons I talk so fast. It isn't just that we're racing the clock. Sometimes it is that energy of, uh, you don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. Yeah, I know this sounds bad. Like, yeah. yeah, we're talking yeah. about the lethal injections, but please don't leave. And so just <laughs> go, 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 go. And yeah. we, we've been lucky that HBO sometimes gives us more time. If we realize this can't fit into the show anymore, we're not actually a 30 minute show anymore, we're a 35 minute show. Oh, that's and sometimes hard. we're 40 or 45 minutes. If we say to them, can we please have 10 more yeah. minutes because there's stuff I can't cut out of this? Yeah, that's right. Nice. Because you'll time your monologue, right? You'll, yes. you'll, oh, yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll read it. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Well, they, I remember they did the same thing. Sometimes in Entourage, they didn't. They hadn't finished telling the story that they needed to mm. tell, and they would go over. You know, they'd have something really important. They were like, they were going to go for for lunch, sure, in Fairfax, and like <laughs> they didn't have time to get to that. And you, you're, I'm so glad you brought that up. We are standing yeah. on the shoulders of Doug Ellen and Entourage. We couldn't have done what we'd done if, unless they... We sure. for, you, uh, thank you for giving the comment. We, we're all standing on those shoulders, believe now, me. Now, what is your process of finding these stories? Is it is it uh, Does it take many shapes and sizes, as little as you just finding something interesting in a magazine, uh, and Sometimes. all the way up to including what? And not just me. It's just yeah. the whole staff can pitch stories. And then if something is interesting to us, we'll give it to a researcher. They'll take it away for a week to work out if the story uh, stands up, you know, if it's been reported accurately, if things are changing that might mean that now is not the right time to talk about it. If if it gets through that first stress test, we'll give it to a, uh, a footage producer as well to see if there's any 
footage through which we can tell the story. Mm -hmm. Only at that point would we add writers to have them just write an outline of a story without any jokes, literally just how would you tell this story. Yeah. Uh, then mm -hmm. we combine those outlines, and only then do they start drafting. And that's about a six-week process. Wow. For each story. Wow. So we're doing, wow. six, we're doing six stories at once constantly. Oh, that's amazing. And then it's always uh, uh, susceptible to total derailment based on the, the topical stories the current of events. the day. Yeah, right? we try to contain that at the top of the show the most of the time. It rarely will be that actually we have to hit pause on everything and just crash a show in a week. That does happen, but we try not to have that happen. Because you are live, yes? No. I mean, or a tape delay. Tape. You're on the same day. Yeah, tape day. delay, yeah. 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 But, but will you, so when you're working on you know, sort of six stories, six weeks in advance. Yeah. So is it like Monday we're working on the thing that, or is it all kind yes. of combined? It is. So Monday <laughs> is that thing, then Tuesday is that, and it's all yeah. like color-coded days? Yes, exactly. It's a complex web of what of uh, things that we need to do to the point that, so uh, just after we've taped the show, literally just after, we come back over the road from the studio and read the drafts that have just been logged for the next week's show. And then, yeah, the first day back, we'll be going through the outlines that have come in. So we'll only then revisit the show that we're doing next week, three days later. So it's a lot of plates to keep spinning, but it's the only way that we can do wow. it. Wow. Um, now, um, in in your in your uh, in your hobnobbing around the, the the political elite, as I'm sure you uh, have an opportunity to at times, <laughs> have you have you gotten your pocket stuffed with a bunch of cards <laughs> and numbers for for deep sourcing <laughs> if you need it? Like, uh, it's a serious no. question. Like, I know, I just like your phrasing. Uh, do you have like some deep throats out there, uh, like that are really highly? Uh, connected that can give you say hey listen this is a real big issue and we love the way you make a mess and go down easy you might want to talk about this and i'll give you some some choice no i'm not i'm not a hobnobber uh it's especially in the circles you're referring to there so i don't have any I, I think we've annoyed enough people that we're generally not welcome for some reason everywhere <sighs> If I worked for the government, you don't I, think have that you're, you, you don't think your knob is welcomed by some deep throats. <laughs> <laughs> There's a clip. Oh. I'm trying to figure out <laughs> the excitement in the pause. Where hold on? Oh, oh, I've got all the pieces for this sentence. Everybody, I know. be yeah. quiet. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. I love it. Believe I love me. it. And it, by the way, it was messy at best. It was just. It was an opportunity. I took the shot. You tee it up, he'll hit it. Yeah. I didn't have a great. I didn't have a great look at the net. But I had enough <laughs> that I thought that, fuck, I might, it might go in. Uh, I'm in my spot. I'm turning around before it even hits the bed. <laughs> John, I, kn I know you've done a lot of acting, too, in your life. Do you miss that? Do you want to do more of that? Or you're like, no, I'm good. Sean has a script. Not, not really. <laughs> I haven't done a lot of acting. And I think when I have done it, I'm not sure I would call it acting. Or <laughs> Yeah, I remember I, do, I, was, I did these uh, NBC sitcom Community, and I remember one, yeah, Jonathan yeah. Banks, legitimate actor, right? He came, came up to me before a scene and said, "I just wanted to talk about you know what our characters are doing before this," and I had to say, "Oh, Jonathan, I'm just going to say these words <laughs> in the funniest possible way." <laughs> these words here with the yellow marker over the top it, it, of them. It really was. It was you know, it, it, you know, an actors uh, act opposite a tennis oh, ball. Yeah. I will yeah. be that ball for you. <laughs> I've yeah. never. Yeah, that's funny. I, in scripts, I've never highlighted lines because I just figured when the char when it says my character and there's a line under it, that's when I talk. Right. <laughs> like, I don't need to highlight when I talk. It's a great point. I just point. look for my name. They do it for you. Yeah. yeah. There, there's no reason to be confused as to what lines are yours. Right. Yeah, and you don't need to make a big deal. I mean, I used to do, I've done, you know, thousands of scenes with Jason, and at a certain point, they were like, do you want Jason? And I go, no, just tape his headshot to a C-stand, yeah. and I'd rather do it to that. You know what I mean? A lot of early days for me. <laughs> we did this one piece uh, with uh, uh, Warren G. Harding's wax statues, and we got Laura Linney, Jason, to oh. act opposite, act opposite <laughs> that Warren G. Harding. And no offense, Watching those takes, he realized, yeah. oh, she's been carrying actors for her yeah. entire career. She needs, <laughs> she needs nothing. Yeah. She doesn't need anything. Yeah. Yeah. Literally a wax statue wobbling in front of her, and she's in tears. <laughs> thinking, oh, you, yeah, it's fine. You're, you're a one man she band. She is incredible. You yep, are absolutely she's... right. Now, how are you shutting off from all of your hard, hard work and, and, yeah. and intelligence? And um, do you do anything stupid, John? 
Uh, not really. No, I've got kids, so I guess everything that kids do is fundamentally stupid, so I'm stooping right. to their level right now. Right, you're, yeah. you're getting on your knees and making yes. funny faces and making dumb noises. That's and... right, I'm pretending that I understand the rules of Pokemon, and I'm also pretending that they understand them. So yeah. uh, wait, how old are they, how old are they, John? Seventeen eight and, and five. five. Yeah. <laughs> wait, three and five? Did you say eight? Eight and five. Yeah. Eight and five. So you're out of Paw Patrol. You're not in. You're not yes, into Mighty I'm Paw out. Patrol. I'm yeah. out of. I'm out now, of Patrol, do you? Man. Is a lot of your days spent, especially these days, wondering who's going to come back first, Tiago or Samikas? I mean, are, where where are we at with that? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it's not here we go. Tiago, we're back it? on it feels, Liverpool. It, it, it feels like the, the guy is an absolute Rolls Royce of a footballer, but I'm just not sure his body can. Stand I know. Up to the Premier League. Rolls Royce of a footballer. <laughs> he really I is. love it. Now, where did soccer come from? Is that true? That's a British term. Yes. The, you know. Sorry. You. you go ahead, it, John. You know. No, no. Right? Go for it. Go for it. So, so like, like in the in the way that like, um, a lot of people call rugby rugger, right? It's, uh, it was soccer, called rugby football. I think rugby it's football. It. Yeah. And the same thing, right? Soccer was came from. The association, the association football. football. Yeah, F soccer was not what we know as soccer was called association football to distinguish it from rugby. Mm -hmm. uh, and so instead of they 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 shortened the association to sock and they call it soccer. The English. Oh, football. oh, yeah. That would be how I. That would be genuinely how I relax is watching Liverpool. Yeah. How are they doing this year? They're doing really well. They're doing yeah. well. I mean, this yeah. is going to be a little delayed, but they had a nice they had a nice draw yesterday. Put them in the final of the Carabao Cup against uh, uh, Chelsea, who are who fuck knows how they got there. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're doing great, aren't they? Yeah, they're very good. They're are you all sports, John, or are you like just soccer? Just sorry, soccer. I, I like all sports, John. We're going to go together. Yeah. We're going to go over there together, and and we're going to go. Look at this. I showed the guy. The guys know this. Oh yeah, yeah. that's me and Jurgen. Oh yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna get it from. That's pretty good, dude. <laughs> you're gonna get it. I, I gotta be honest. Thanks. That's pretty good. It's high Thanks. level. Yeah, I might um, make a donation to the Chlamydia Foundation and now in your name for that joke. <laughs> um, Mr. Oliver, uh, this has been fantastic. Yes. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, such a pleasure. Oh. Thank you, guys. You're, uh, you're very, it. very nice to do this with us. I know you're busy. Welcome. And yeah, you're, you're much smarter than dude. us, and you, you dumbed it down for us, and yeah, we appreciate thank you. that. Thank, thank you. you. We love it. We love you, dude. Keep doing what you do. Honestly, it's it's funny, and it's fun, and it's important. I love it. And it's, it's all of those I watch things. it all Educational. the time. Educational. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thank um, you. As you're talking, I'm going to put the paper back over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> back into hell. <laughs> so you can keep uh, talking, and I'm going to leave. I do not like compliments. <laughs> <laughs> Farewell. I know. Thank, thank you, John, John Oliver. Thank, thank you. you. The great John Oliver. We'll see you soon, I hope. Bye. bye bye. Go Reds. That's uh, that's a that's a great guest. This yeah. is just a great really guest. Really good. Had, had you known him, Jason? Really before? good. No, I, I've I've circled him a couple of times at at things we've both been at, but never doesn't sound creepy. Had the uh, opportunity to touch him. <laughs> you've just <laughs> wait. Yeah. You certainly you've just kind of you've just kind of yeah. roamed near him and like tighter and tighter him. circles each time I see him and never gotten close enough to put my hand out and say hi. Hi. I did a couple. I've done over the years. I've done a few uh, vo's for some of his bits for his show. Oh, oh really? He's been kind enough to reach out. Yeah, that were like sort of semi serious things, and uh, and um, I've always been very kind of honored that he asked me. Honored with a U. I really uh, do. Uh, very nice. I do. Uh, I I do appreciate him or anyone else <clears throat> that is able to whatever whatever side of the political spectrum you 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 sit. Um, mm -hmm. And I just I like that people are able to get info to us, facts to us in a way that is not overly preachy or uh, right. I mean it's just like, well it's through we, comedy which I uh, yeah we just we need that because we don't know where all the honest stuff is nowadays because all the you know. Anyway. I, it, honestly, it's, it, it's as long as you, it, you're right, Jay. No matter what side you're on, as long as you can, or where you fall, forget side, yeah. where you fall, as yeah. long as you don't take yourself too seriously at the yeah. end of the day, you can, mm -hmm. then fucking great. Yeah. And it's the moment that you start to, that your position is unassailable and that, and that it's, uh, yeah. uh, and there's no way that you can, then, then I'm, you've lost. That's, me. I, I well, except when you're talking about facts, you know, as long as everyone just yeah, agrees yeah, yeah. to what, what, what are provable facts, then you can have your own opinion and stuff. But 
Anyway, uh, he's uh, is another one that's I feel uh, maybe overstated, but uh, he's doing a service, you know. But you know, you know what it is. Also, I think part of I think that what's effective is is because he is English and he's not from here. He Jeez, can kind of, but he, no, it's true, and he can come here and have it like an outsider's perspective in that sense, like somebody who's watched. It's the same thing with Canadians. We're like really. I always say that Canadians we grew up were very similar culturally, et cetera, and, and geographically, of course. But it's almost like we grew up against the glass, and to make a hockey metaphor, yeah. we're right there, uh, and we get to see it all. So you get to understand and see what works and what doesn't work, and you're, you you can have a point of view that is informed, but not necessarily have a dog in the fight, personally. Right. Yeah. Um, and I guess that, that it's just a byproduct of being so uh, for him. <laughs> it's a by it's a byproduct. Yeah, you can deliver some facts just by doing a drive-by. Bye. Bye. Sean, bye. you got one? Sean, you got a little one? I got a drive-by. I'm, I'm, I'm a buyer. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Granteri. Smart. Less.